welcome to our Wednesday night live. We're so glad to join you in your homes or maybe your drive home, whatever it is tonight. But we're going to continue our series um, or at least the topic we talked about last week just on the power of prayer. So we're really excited tonight. Yeah, so it's the, it's the inauguration day. And, um, you know, I just whether you agree with um, who is put in office or not, any, whoever it is that's ever in office needs prayer. Nah, is that correct? Nah, and so I'm not asking you to do anything that I'm not going to be doing myself. And, and so um, I think it's just a, this is a great opportunity for us to, to trust God, to pray, to um, just to do the things that he asks us to do. And sometimes it, it can seem a little bit difficult at times, but you know what? God is so good. He doesn't ask us to do anything that isn't good for us, isn't good for others, and he's just, he's just a good father. So I found this quote from uh, Charles Spurgeon, true prayer is neither a mere mental exercise nor a vocal performance. It is far deeper than that. It is a spiritual transaction with the creator of heaven and earth. I oh, love that. The creator, so that is who we serve, is the creator of heaven and earth. God invites encourages and wants us to talk to him he wants to have conversation with us how many I'm you glad. isn't that right he yeah. wants to have conversation with us i'm glad he used that word conversation because a lot of times people can just make that word prayer as if it's kind of a um, mysterious um, <laughs> thing that we're supposed to be doing on a you know daily basis and did you pray today and if so what did you pray and God answers prayers and it's important to pray and all that. And the truth is prayer is simply a conversation Amen. with God. Right. And you know, there are times I think it's important that we do set aside time to have conversation with God where we're by ourselves and we are talking to him and listening for him to talk back to us and, and spend time in his word and, and kind of our own time with the Lord that he calls us away. But the truth is we can be praying all day long, right. every day. In other words, having conversation with God, just being aware of his presence, acknowledging him in everything like the word talks about. You could say that that's prayer. So having that's a exactly conversation, right. acknowledging God, listening and being aware of his presence is prayer. It's, it's, it's conversation. It's, yeah. it's like this right here. And, you know, there's a time to um, get on your knees, on your face, sure. sometimes to go into your yeah. prayer closet, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but you know, when I was in sales, I drove a lot. I was talking to God all the time, yeah. you know, with my eyes open. But you know, <laughs> so, so so it's it's just this conversation with Him, just a uh, just a constant acknowledging, hey, I'm, you, I know you're here with me. Yeah. Um, I know you're a good father. I, I've I've got some requests here. And we make those known to him. And uh, I want to read James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6 from the New Living Translation. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God. I love how that says that. Our generous God. And he will give it to you. It, he says, I will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, verse 6. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. So when our faith is in our president or a congressman or our boss, whatever that might be, along with God, and so we've got it in both, we are going to be wavering. That's one way to know really quickly where our faith is. When something in the natural causes us to begin to waver, to get our focus off of God, to um, start making rational or emotional decisions, to begin to react to circumstances instead of to respond to circumstances. So that's just a, a good way. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea. Those waves are coming and going, in and out, in and out, up and down. I mean, um, you know, you can uh, look at uh, video or whatever of those waves. I've, 
I've not been to the ocean, so I've not experienced this. Um, I'd rather be in the mountains. So anyway, some people, that's hard for some people. But, but I mean, it's such a good point, and it's such a natural point where we can uh, compare that to keeping our focus, our faith in our generous God, and He will give us what we're asking for. And I like that, that in the New Living Translation, it uses that example of, um, I think in the King James it might say being double-minded. Don't be double-minded when you ask God for wisdom. But um, in the New Living it says, but divided loyalty is like the waves of the sea that's you know tossed to and fro. In other words, being loyal to your trust and faith in God's promises. In other words, I'm not going to waver from what God has has promised me or Amen. said or declared in his word. I'm gonna stay loyal to the nature and the character of our loving good God. No matter what the waves are doing, because we know our circumstances, even like in our world just today, in, in our world and in this nation, the circumstances are like just huge crashing waves right now telling us a different story That's right. than what God is telling us in our hearts and with what he promises us as his church and just yeah, as a nation. Good. So are we going to be loyal to saying, God, give us wisdom during this time. Give us wisdom as individuals, as families, as leaders, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need your wisdom to navigate these times that we that we are living in regardless of the waves and i'm going to stay loyal to your word i'm going to stay so loyal and believe and trust in who you are not in what it looks and sounds like right now in our nation or our leadership so so good and um but there's a choice that we have and god said that when we ask just trust that it's ours don't question it. God, thank you for that wisdom. I have it today. I'm going to walk in your yeah. wisdom to, you know, whatever God's called us to do in our jobs, our families, our churches, etc. And just move forward in confidence. Don't be like that way that, you know, person that builds their house on the sand that when the waves come crashing in, it crumbles. But our house or our foundation is built solid on the rock of Christ. And no matter how big the waves, we're not going to be shaken. That's, that's so good. And as you're saying that, I'm thinking about, you know, regardless of what the circumstances are or have been in my life or maybe what they might look like tomorrow, every time I open the word to read it, the scriptures are always the same. That's God so never wavers. Right. His word never wavers. He says what he means <laughs> and we just have to believe that. Yeah, that's You know, so all scriptures, God breathes. So um, he is not being tossed. He's not being, shaken. God is, he's not being shaken. He is not all of a sudden worried and not, and, and, you know, and as I'm saying that, some of you might be thinking, oh, we know that he's God. But sometimes in our circumstances, by the way we are reacting it's as if we think that God is wavering and he isn't sure and it, are his promises real or am I going to go back and look at look at some scripture and all of a sudden it's going to be reworded it's going to look a little different mm -hmm. absolutely not so God so that's our solid foundation where we know okay Lord I didn't see this coming but your word still says this every so day it still says good. the same thing your promises are still the same and you do not waver. I can always, if I'm not sure what to do in a situation, I can I can go to Google and I can type in a little bit about what I remember about a scripture and it brings it up and I can go back to it and reread it. And all of a sudden, man, my faith is just built. I begin to settle down. Yeah. And I'm, and that takes It takes God's word to settle me down because I'm wound up anyway. <laughs> but you know what? I read God's word and it's amazing how it's like, ah, taking a Peace. deep breath. It's just peace, the peace that passes all understanding. understanding. So, and, we, and being thankful, I want to go to Philippians 4, 6 from the New Living. Don't worry about anything. I love that. Don't worry about what? Anything. anything. Everything is covered under anything, right? Instead, <laughs> okay, if I'm not going to worry about anything, what do I do? <laughs> right here. Pray about everything. There's no, there is nothing, no circumstance 
in your life that is too big or too small. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. You know, when, when I go back and I begin remembering prayers that have been answered, that helps to build my faith also, and it just causes me to, to remember, okay, he's, He did this for me. Why can't, why wouldn't He do this for me? Yeah. It, it, the circumstance may look a little bit different. It may look a whole lot different, but God's like, I've got this, but we just keep our focus on him, keep our trust, our faith in him, not in man, not in, in any other person besides him and watch what he can do. Amen. I he, didn't know if you want to say. Uh, yeah, Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says this. So then... Since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. Verse 15. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and will find grace to help us when we need it most. This scripture passage basically is saying that whatever we are needing at any time, we can have confidence to come to God boldly, not with shame and guilt, not feeling unworthy or um, you know, fearful to approach Him. Literally, this scripture is saying, you can come to God at any point about anything because Jesus went before you and made the way and paved the way by putting you in right standing with God, by making us righteous through his sacrifice. So now we can approach what, you know, some people would say, oh, the throne room of God or his throne is such is so holy and it is. But the truth is this, because of our great high priest, in other words, the, the sacrifice that Jesus made to take our place, he placed us back in right standing right. with the holy God. And as his now offspring, his children, we can come right directly to the throne of grace and receive help when we need it most. How many of you would agree? that I think we need him more now than we ever have as a country, as a church, as the, the children of God. Mm -hmm. We need to know that, that there is nothing blocking us or hindering us from running right into the very presence right. of a holy God and with confidence knowing that we will find, as it says in the end of that scripture, grace to help us and even receive his mercy when we need it most. So good. Yeah. There's nothing that we should ever feel like, ah, I can't really go to God about that. I can't really talk to him about that. Or I don't wanna bother him with that. Or whatever the excuses are that maybe you've heard from maybe other teachers or just, you know, the enemies told you, oh, don't, you can't, you can't talk about that. Or you yeah. can't pray about that. Or you, you shouldn't bring that one up. No go directly to God, jump right up on his lap as right. his daughter or his son and say, right. Lord, I need to talk to you about this. I need you more now than ever. And he says, we will receive what we're there for. That's so good. And, and, and I want to look back at verse 14, the end of it there. Let us hold firmly to what we believe. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why he's saying that is, he is obviously he understands that we are going to have opportunity to not believe yeah. the scriptures when we see the circumstances. Let us hold firmly. In in other words, man, firmly. It's it in the middle of some of some of the most difficult circumstances. You're gonna have to make effort. You're gonna have to grip hard. You're gonna have to hold firmly to Good. what you believe because your circumstances are 180 degrees from what God's word is saying, but circumstances never change his promises. So I wanna encourage you if for 2021, write down 10 or 15 promises so that so that when you face a circumstance or whatever, whatever it might be, you can flip open your phone or, or open up your uh, computer or whatever that might be, and you can go to those scriptures, those promises, and remind yourself of them. I want to yeah, I read this okay. one 
right here also. Um, Luke 18, 1. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. That's so again, cool. effort again in the middle of a difficult circumstance. Don't give up. Never, ever give up. Continue. God, you know, there are times when I've prayed. I do not, uh, I'm going to rewind just a second. I do not allow when there's been times in my past when I felt like a prayer hasn't been answered, I'm not going to allow that to keep me from praying and being in faith for That's my right. prayer I'm praying now to be answered. I think sometimes our prayers aren't answered because it's protection from God. We're praying something, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, that it just wasn't God's will for us in our life. It seemed like it was good, but God's like, but I've got something different. I've got something better. And so we just have to trust him and keep going back to these yeah. promises and saying, okay, that prayer wasn't answered. Who cares? This is what his word says. Amen. So just in closing, and we've got a lot more on here that I think we'll even pick up with next Wednesday, but um, Psalm 34, 17 um, says, The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. Right. And then Psalm 17, 6 says, I'm praying to you, God, because I know you will answer. So you bend down and listen as I pray. I mean, even David I love, I knew that, that I, I'm not just wasting my breath. I know, in other words, his loyalty again, he knew and trusted in the faithfulness of God and that God heard him when he prayed. I think we could just start there even if, if um, like even Joe was saying that, even if there's times in our lives that we prayed or went to God about something and we felt that it didn't turn out the way we either expected or that we felt it should have or whatever. And that can hinder a lot of people from saying, God, does God really hear me? And does he, he does. actually care? He absolutely hears and listens to your prayers and to your heart. And he is not a distant God who doesn't care about our daily life. He is faithful and our loyalty needs to just remain in his faithfulness and in his word and promises to us. That's right. And I love it here. David's got such a belief and such a relationship with God. He tells God, bend down and listen as I pray. I mean, just that relationship. And I can just see God. I'm, I can hear you, David. I can hear you. I can hear you, Joe. I can hear you, Tessa. I can hear what it, put your name in there. I can hear what you're saying. I'm listening. I do care about what you care about. And man, he... He is. He wants to and will answer your prayer. Again, he's never surprised by it. And and the truth is this: by faith, I mean he's already made a way of escape. He's already he's already um, made a way to fix the problem and to where we will come out better, even on the other side. Even if we're we're not sure at the at the moment, how can God fix this? And God's <laughs> up there going, I've okay. got. I absolutely have this and and then back to 34 17 like you said babe rescues them from all their troubles not some not most not 99.9 percent .9%, but all of their troubles sometimes it takes a little bit of time sometimes um you know it's not always an instant thing but at, but again make the effort i'm going to be firm i'm not going to be shaken i'm I am not going to be moved. Your word, your promises say this, regardless of what this looks like. And I'm going to keep my face looking at the word. I'm going to keep rehearsing these scriptures over and over. Your faith is built. And before you know it, man, I guarantee you, you will see the outcome that you are looking for, that God has already planned for you. And you know, the, the most effective prayers too. Let me just say this, because I know a couple times we've talked about that the outcome may be different than your expectation. And we know that when we pray his word, that we, we are praying perfectly according to God's right. will. It's his word. It's written clearly what his will is so, for our life and times. Then there's other times that we're just simply talking to him or praying, uh, you know, to him about situations in life or maybe relationships or people, things or um, desires in our heart. I mean, you name it, you know, relationship 
with my husband. I don't just talk to him about the things I need. I mean, there's many things I talk to him about on a daily basis. And it's the same with God. And again, when things, when God says he rescues us from all our troubles, the lifeline that God throws to us by his mercy and grace may look different than what you think it yeah. needed to be or how yeah. you wanted God to answer that or send you that lifeline. But the truth is he's a good loving father who does care about our daily lives. And, right. and again, it might look different than what you thought or the timing might be different than what you wanted. But I'll tell you this, your confidence and loyalty can remain in his word that when you pray according to his will, right. we know he hears us and answers us. And so we'll good. pick back up there next, next Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay. with those scriptures in John to encourage you about just your prayer life, your relationship with God. We love you all love you so guys. much. Come on out this Saturday night for Vision Night. We've got some amazing things we want to share exciting. from our hearts. And we'll see you Saturday at 630.